Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This video series is all about coasts and coastal landscapes as well as coastal management. And today we're going to start off looking at the importance of waves concerning our coastline environments. Now, as always, there's a link in the description box below for the worksheets that you can complete while watching these videos. And these will help you create nice revision notes or support you if you are learning from home. So let's start by thinking about cosines and what a cosine actually is. So when I use this word coastline, I am referring to where the land meets the sea. And within our coastline environments and our coastal locations, waves constantly influence the shape of our coastlines. And yes, we as people, we do attempt to manage such changes that the waves create. They cause erosion, transportation and deposition. And we can manage coastlines in different ways, but we're not quite onto that yet. So today we're just going to be thinking about how those waves influence our coastline. So let me explain to you how waves form. So if we were, for example, to hold a cup of water in front of us and blow over the surface of that cup of water, that gust of air coming out of your mouth will travel over the surface of the cup and create friction. This is the same thing that happens in the ocean or the sea. Waves are formed by the wind blowing across the surface of the sea and that transfer of energy creates friction across the water's surface. This friction across the surface of the water creates these small ripples, which eventually will develop into waves. Now, wave energy can depend on something known as fetch. And fetch means the strength of the wind and the length of time over which the wind has blown. So the longer the fetch, the greater the possibility of larger waves being created and potentially this may result in storm-like conditions. So what happens then when waves reach and approach our coastline? Well, out in the deep ocean or in your deep sea, before they reach the coastline, waves will travel in a circular orbit in the open water. But as they approach the coastline, friction with the seabed of the shoreline actually begins to distort the circular orbit and make that wave become a more elliptical shape. The crest or the top of the wave then moves at a faster speed compared to the trough, the base of the wave, and that then increases the elliptical orbit. When the wave eventually approaches the shoreline, that wave will break and wash onto the shoreline. The water then that rushes up the beach is known as swash and the water that retreats and flows back towards the sea is known as backwash. Now despite the relatively wavy surface of the open sea, there is little horizontal movement, this side to side movement in the open water. This side to side movement only occurs when the waves break and surge up the beach through swash as they approach the coastline. So out in your open ocean or open water, you have very little horizontal movement, that side to side movement in the water. Now, when it comes to coastlines, there are two different types of waves, a constructive wave and a destructive wave. And both of these waves can influence the shape of the coastline in very different ways. So we're going to start off looking at a constructive wave. And a constructive wave if we break this word down, constructs the beach. So these waves are what are responsible for building up those lovely sandy or silt shingle beaches. Now, constructive waves have a relatively low wave height. Typically, they are under one meter in height. And constructive waves are known for having really strong swash. All their energy goes into the approach and then washing up onto the coastline. And because of that, it can carry a lot and transport a lot of material onto the coastline. But constructive waves have a very weak backwash and they use all their energy in the swash. So when it comes to them retreating back into the sea through backwash, they have no energy left. 
And this causes deposition to take place. So that sediment, that sand, that silt, that gets dropped off on your coastline and that constructs and builds up your beaches. Now, constructive waves are also known for having very long wavelengths and they also occur at a very low frequency. And what that means is, is that the amount of waves approaching the beach that wash up onto the shore is a smaller amount compared to a destructive wave. So on average, we will have eight to 10 constructive waves approaching the beach per minute. Now, if we then look at our second type of wave, this wave is known as a destructive wave. And again, if you break this word down, destructive, we're thinking about the word destroy here. So these are the types of waves responsible for erosion, destroying the beach, washing away part of your coastline. And destructive waves, in comparison to constructive waves, have really tall wave heights. On average, they are over one meter in height. And a destructive wave, in comparison to a constructive wave, has a weak swash. So when a destructive wave approaches the beach, it has very little energy because it takes so much energy to create that really tall wave height. This means that when the wave breaks onto the coastline, all of the energy is then released and that destructive wave has a very strong backwash then as it retreats back into the body of water. What this means is, is we will get increased amounts of erosion on our coastline here because of that strong backwash, being able to use all its energy to pull all that sediment off the beach. And destructive waves have shorter wavelengths. They're higher in frequency as well. So when destructive waves approach our coastline, we can have 10 to 14 occurring per minute. Now, if we were to quickly summarize the difference between each type of wave. We've got constructive waves again and a destructive wave. And if we're thinking about wave height, our constructive wave has a low wave height, typically under one meter. Whereas your destructive wave has a tall wave height, typically over one meter. In relation to the length of the wave, your constructive wave has a long wavelength compared to your destructive wave, which has a short wavelength. And when it comes to wave frequency, we will get eight to 10 constructive waves approaching the coastline per minute. In comparison, our destructive waves, we will have about 10 to 14 per minute. Now, when we're thinking about the strength of the swash, we're thinking about when the waves approach. Our constructive waves are the one that has the strongest swash and your destructive wave has the weaker swash because it needs more energy to generate that wave height. The strength of the backwash when the wave retreats from the coastline, your weak backwash is your constructive wave and your strongest backwash is associated with your destructive wave because they cause erosion. And finally, your net beach sediment refers to the amount of sediment that is present on the coastline and that net beach sediment can either increase on the coastline or decrease. So when it comes to constructive waves, because they construct beaches and they build up beaches because of deposition occurring due to that strong swash and that weak backwash, our net beach sediment will increase. In comparison, a destructive wave, because of its really strong backwash, will have a net beach sediment which decreases because of erosion taking place. So as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you're finding these videos useful. And I'll see you next time.